Other YouTube channels like Gamers Unboxed and Paul's Tech Tips will give you scientific tests utilising high performance processors and RAM to test graphics cards at their maximum potential. And but for a twist of fate that sent us spiralling into the worst timeline, that could have been me. Instead, somehow, I'm stuck with... As many of you have commented on my graphics card benchmarks, my choice of CPU in the test bench has been somewhat limiting from time to time. While decade-old GCN and Kepler cards are no hassle for my mighty quad-core Zen 2 CPU, modern cards like the 6700 XT and even the Vega 64 have proven to be a bit much for it to handle. So, a bit of background for context. Iceberg Tech was started on a fairly tight budget at the end of 2020, with the intent of focusing on graphics card reviews in the same mould of channels like... Zworms. If you were planning on making such a channel, you would probably start with a powerful gaming PC as your test bench, so as not to have your CPU's lack of threads or clocks influence the results from your graphics cards. That would have been a very smart choice. Clever you. I, on the other hand, felt a change in the wind. The world of PC building was undergoing a radical shift in direction, and the audience's appetite for such bourgeoisie content had begun to turn into disdain. What good is a video that advertises the power and performance of tech we can't actually buy? Resolved to answer the will of the people, I eschewed the elitist conventions of tech reviews and instead decided to test my graphics cards in a gaming PC built for the proletariat. A reasonably priced test PC for reasonably priced GPUs. Bottlenecks be damned! Okay, that's, that's all only partially true. I'd actually started building a proper GPU test bench at the start of the channel. I'd found myself a great deal on an MSI Z390 Godlike, a 240mm AIO, and a decent kit of RAM on Black Friday 2020, and by the end of the year I was contemplating picking up a used i9 9900K, I was well and truly prepared to start my channel the right way. Of course, as I was looking to make budget-oriented content, I'd also started putting together some more economical PCs to make full build style videos about, the results of which are linked below. One such project used a PC I'd put together for a, around £400, which I intended to sell on for a modest profit and use the proceeds towards the i9 for my test bench. The PC in question would have made for a nice value entry point into PC gaming, with some room for upgrades later. The motherboard was an ASUS Prime A320MK, which, with its latest BIOS revision, is compatible with Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. While it lacked overclocking, 5000 series support and only had two RAM slots, I wasn't building for an enthusiast who might want such things. The real attraction here was the GPU and CPU combo. The Ryzen 3 3100 and GTX 1650 Super were an ideal value combination for 1080 gaming in late 2020, and given that people were clamouring to get gaming PCs for Christmas, I felt confident I'd turn a good profit. I can't remember what the exact turning point was. I'd picked up a few graphics cards to review, but aside from that I was really struggling to find unique content for my videos. The nature of the scalper pandemic was starting to emerge, with predictions that it would last well into the next year. It felt like I'd picked a uniquely bad time to start a tech channel. Rather than continue down what I felt was not the right path for my channel, I decided to cancel the Intel testbed idea altogether. I chose instead to remove the budget PC from sale, strip out the GPU, and use that quad-core, 8GB beginner-friendly PC as my test bench. Thus was born the reasonably priced gaming PC. If you've been following along, you might well know that the RPG PC, as it stands in September 2021, isn't exactly the same as the one I started the year with. Like the ship of Theseus, uh, Theseus, the reasonably priced gaming PC has had a few upgrades, a few parts removed and replaced, either from choice or necessity, but it's still the same PC. After having had it up to my back teeth with Call of Duty Warzone, I spent a video figuring out the optimal configuration of physical and virtual RAM 
testing my 2x4GB kit against a 2x8GB kit. Although I concluded that 8GB can still be sufficient, if you make sure you allocate your virtual memory page file to your SSD, I still decided to make the 16GB upgrade permanent, swapping out the 8GB of Team Group DDR4 3000 for 16GB of Corsair LPX with the same spec. More recently, after my Ryzen 3400G review, which I rather petulantly called um, f graphics cards, I began to lament the RPG PC's inability to get the most out of the APU. Fortunately, B450 motherboard prices have come down a lot in the last few months, and I picked up a basic MSI B450 MA Pro for £35 from Amazon Warehouse, so that I might play with clock speeds a bit more. Around the same time, in preparation for my next APU video, I upgraded my RAM once again. I'd found this dodgy as hell, unknown brand selling what is really a pretty brilliant idea. A pair of DDR4 4000 sticks of RAM with understated mirror finish heat spreaders and tasteful RGB light bars, and a matching pair of dummy sticks for people who can't bear to see gaps in their 4 slot motherboards. Now, I didn't need the dummies, and I certainly didn't need RGB, but as the kit was uncommonly cheap for the spec, I snapped them up. As expected, the timings were pretty bad, but with a bit of tuning they can match some of the better branded kits out there. This, by the way, is not a recommendation or review of these sticks. Getting refunds on dodgy shit is all a part of the day in the life for me, but that doesn't mean you should have to. On the subject of dodgy shit, the original Aerocool Integrator modular PSU in this build started to exhibit problems booting. Thankfully it didn't explode or start a fire, but before it had the chance to, I pulled it out and swapped it for an EVGA 600 watt white PSU. This is the budget power supply of choice for many YouTubers, so I'm confident it shouldn't let me down. And that brings me to the state of play here in autumn 2021. The RPG PC still runs on the Ryzen 3 3100, and as such, basically matches the specs of the average gaming PC according to Valve and their Steam hardware survey. As the end of the year approaches and I start thinking about the future, I'm having a hard time deciding what to do with it next. With the current BIOS revision, the motherboard supports 5000 series CPUs. If I wanted to, I could pick up a more modern CPU with more cores and steer the channel back in the direction I'd originally intended. I could start from scratch, resell this PC and use the proceeds to pick up something like a 10700K or 10850K and pair it with a more overclocking friendly motherboard and some lower latency RAM. Or I could carry on as I am and march onwards with the quad-core RPG PC into 2022. Part of me wants to use this as an excuse to upgrade my personal rig. I have a 5600X right now, and I'd be tempted to pick up a 5800X or 5900X for my own PC and move the 6-core CPU to the test bench, though I don't really have the money to be spending £300 plus on a CPU for personal use right now. On the other hand, maybe you guys come here for the budget, lower-spec PC content. Maybe upgrading the PC would fundamentally change the channel in a way that you wouldn't want to watch. I don't have access to the community tab until I reach a thousand subs, so I can't post polls yet. Until that happens, I'd appreciate your feedback in the comments. Let me know what kind of test PC you'd like to see me use for GPU tests in the future. If you wanted to see a specific GPU tested on the RPG PC, the Tales of the Scalper Pandemic playlist should be on screen now. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.